I'm Donnell Wilkins. I am the executive director and one of the co-founders of Detroiters Working for Environmental Justice, a lifelong Detroiter committed to the city of Detroit and bringing the city back to what it used to be, a great and thriving, wonderful city to live. Working for Environmental Justice was uh, organized in 1994 by uh, a number of people who were really committed to improving the quality of life, particularly around environmental issues that specifically address urban uh, quality of life issues such as illegal dumping, um, the location of toxic facilities, uh, land use and land use planning and those kind of things that impact the quality of life or the built environment and um, the natural environment. We came together to raise awareness about environmental justice and, to, and what was termed as environmental racism to identify opportunities in the city of Detroit where that can be done and to impact public policy through uh, an advocacy model. Um, we have uh, done a number of things to do the work that we set out to do and I think that we've been pretty successful at raising the issues around environmental justice and really putting it in the face of public policy uh, and decision making. up with the Green Jobs Program now. Since 1994, actually, Detroit is working for environmental justice has been involved in training citizens around the environment. We started off with providing training for hazardous waste workers, and we wanted to make certain that of the 40,000 contaminated sites in the city, that some way, somehow, our community would get to benefit in the cleanup of those uh, contaminated sites. Uh, essentially, that program expanded into a much more broader, comprehensive workforce training uh, project. And we call it our Green Jobs Training Program today uh, with the model we have to clean up before we green up. Um, given that 40,000 sites inside the city of Detroit alone uh, forced the city uh, at one point to be designated a, a brownfield site in its entirety, someone has to clean that up. And we thought, well, where are the skill sets in the city of Detroit that can actually compete for those cleanup jobs? And there really wasn't uh, many places uh, available to folks in Detroit to develop that skill set. We decided to create that kind of capacity for ourselves. And we did. And I'm really pleased to say that uh, after launching the, the full blown comprehensive training program in 2007, our first class, graduating class of about 22 people, are. Um, 100% employed, and we're excited about that, and they're employed in really good jobs. We're extremely excited about that, and what I mean by good jobs, they are actually being paid on average $13 per hour, and for an entry-level job. The jobs range from cleanup, from cleaning up hazardous waste uh, sites, putting on big moon suits, actually uh, doing jobs such as cleaning up oil spills or uh, responding as emergency technicians to uh, derailed railroad uh, cars or whatever, but they also go into the green economy. Many folks are hired and are employed in the energy auditing and assessment um, uh, field. We have uh, folks who have actually been hired in with environmental consulting firms. We train in uh, environmental assessments, uh, phase one and phase two environmental assessments. And those kind of jobs open up a, a, a range of opportunities that we have yet to determine because that we offer the training program. It speaks directly to sort of the low impact sustainability and design of, of uh, places and, uh, and land. And one of the, the areas that we're really focusing on is the whole green landscaping piece of that. Beginning with the, the cleanup piece of that, first with uh, our curriculum around phytoremediation, which is the extraction of contaminants and toxins, uh, cleaning up land that's been impacted by toxins, industrial waste, and those kind of things. And then to the design, utilizing uh, storm water and other water and whatever that would help uh, with providing the kind of irrigation one needs for um, sustainable landscaping and green, and as well as capturing uh, plants that are indigenous to the area. We think there are opportunities for, for that. One of the exciting things that the BUD project, the Build of Detroit project I mentioned earlier, uh, has to offer is we're attempting to create a model neighborhood where we 
can really put into practice and model the kinds of things we're talking about. Taking one of the hardest hit areas in the city of Detroit, uh, taking advantage of the land in, uh, in terms of the vacant properties, as well as existing structures and uh, saving them from the land fields by doing deconstruction and or by uh, just renovating and, um, existing properties and incorporating um, um, material and labor in a way that is sustainable and has a very little impact on, um, on the environment and really creating a very low uh, impact. I'm excited about the opportunity that this Green Jobs presents for the community in the city of Detroit because for so long they have basically borne the greatest burden uh, for decisions about the location of contaminated sites or uh, location of facilities that pollute and or brownfield sites that have been abandoned. And we really wanted to provide an opportunity where they could actually share some benefits. One reason that places like Detroit do become the host uh, communities for undesirable land uses has very much to do with economics, jobs versus the environment. Uh, and we think that's a myth. And we really believe that there are opportunities if we begin to look at our environment as an opportunity and not uh, one, and as an asset, not a liability. So community people are very excited about the opportunities for jobs and jobs that will make a difference and actually result in improving uh, the quality of life in, in places throughout the city and in, in the region and beyond, as a matter of fact. Um, just an example, we, we have not spent a lot of time creating a marketing plan for our training program because we know that if we did that, we may not be able to handle the kind of response from the community uh, that's out there. So with very little marketing efforts, just by word of mouth for the most part and putting some things up on our website, the first year we had about 300 people show up for 25 spots. and. The second year, we had oh, nearly 500 people show up for another 25 spots. And so there's, there, there it is. There's a demand for it at the community level. And we really want to uh, build the kind of capacity so that we can meet that demand. And there's a demand on the employer side as well. And one of the hallmarks of our program is partnering with employers who have participated in developing the curricula for our program. They've engaged in interviewing um, potential candidates for the program. They've actually participate and do participate in the instructional element of the program. And then they're waiting on the other end to hire people. And that's really exciting. So I can't think of a better time to be in the city of Detroit and to be here at this time because there are opportunities as we transition from a pollution-based economy to a more green and sustainable base. I cannot describe the satisfaction I get from someone who thought that um, they were at the end of their rope and that no one believed in them and that they didn't have anything to contribute to society or to benefit their community or their families and their own personal lives. Um, to see folks come through and discover that they are capable, they are valued, and they are successful, they can be successful, is very rewarding for me. I remember one young man during the graduation process last year, and he you know, was this really big, tough guy, and he broke down into tears, and he really thanked us for giving him a chance. So this is more than providing jobs for people. This is about transforming lives. And I can't think of a better way to help people reconnect to their community and to the environment in a way that allows them to give back. In some cases, many of them have spent their entire lives taking from their community. But this program and this project allows them to give back and they see the value in that. And I call them our ambassadors. So that's the most favorite part of my work.